You're hot and you're drinking tea. I just need something. Which is perfect introduction for steam time. Felicia's hot and drinking tea and complaining about it. As you know, I am Felicia. And as you know, I am Giancarlo. And this is um, steam time. Is it a, like a time machine? Uh, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. Actually, it's, it's pretty... It's, wow. You just blew my mind, Felicia. You're like... Because I never get anything. Like, like you're smarter when you're sick. It's great. <laughs> I'm not sick. I just woke up with a... A little scratchy. <laughs> a little scratchy. <laughs> Eight old monuments around the world hold great power. In 1899, the Temporal Institute of Monument Exploration, or TIME, has found a way to time travel using steam powered airships and retrieve the crystal deposits found in each monument. You are a captain of one of these airships and want to stay ahead of your competitors by having the most esteem or victory points and gain the Temporal Institute's eternal glory. The stream of time has been placed randomly as the board is modular, with the correct side face up denoted here as the number of players. Missions, encounters, time crystals, gold, and time token are placed in their spaces. The effort cards, upgrade tiles, and expedition cards are set in ascending order. The first effort card will be revealed, as well as the upgrade tiles, expedition cards, and mission cards, on or next to the time board, which have them listed. Take crystals from the bag to fill in the spaces in each crystal deposit on the time board. Determine a first player, and then each player will take an airship board with matching airship tokens and discs, which will be placed in the appropriate spaces. They'll gain matching crystals for their appropriate generators on the airship, as well as some gold. Each round consists of three phases. Income action and supply starting with the first player and going clockwise players will take one action from a list of two place an airship or take the first player token when placing an airship you must place it on any time board above the ones where you already have an airship you own the flow of time does not allow you to travel back or stay in the current time you'll also place it on a specific box on the board to generate an action some will have bonuses listed on the bottom of the box so do pay attention but let's take a look at what each colors do from left to right. The first one is Mission. Here you'll simply grab the available mission cards there. These are end game scoring conditions. The blue box is Encounters. You'll draw a number of encounter cards as denoted and choose one. These historical figures can help you by giving you a choice of an effect. Some might help others as well as denoted by the pink box, so choose wisely. Crystal deposits will have you pay 2 gold for each crystal you want to purchase. Crystals are important as they act as currency and will give you bonuses when taking actions which we'll talk about soon. When buying crystals, they'll go in their matching generator on your airship. When placing these crystals, place them in the leftmost available space. Some space requires you to pay gold. Should there be a time crystal there, make sure it is always placed last in this succession. Placing an airship on an upgrade will have you spend crystals to buy it, and place it on your airship board. The cost will be determined by these letters which reference the current effort card. When spending crystals to buy, you must remove them from the specific color generator on your ship starting from the rightmost crystal. That is why time crystals are always first to go. Though they act as a wild when acquiring them, where you can place them in any generator on your ship, they'll also be the first to get spent from that type of crystal. Should you not have the required crystal or choose to not spend a specific type, you can convert any other rightmost crystal from any generator into the required crystal by spending a steam as well. As long as you have the steam and crystal to convert, you can do this any number of times. When an upgrade has been bought, place it here and immediately gain the rewards listed. These will repeat at the first phase of each subsequent rounds, the income phase. Placing an airship here will generate gold, and lastly, placing it on an expedition space will have you gain that expedition card. As in buying an upgrade, the cost is listed here. Depending on how many crystals you have in your analytic engine generator affects how many rewards you immediately get listed on the expedition card. Rather than take an action, a player besides the first player on the first turn of any given round may choose to take the first player token instead. When he does so, he'll have a choice he may take. Either convert a steam into a time crystal one time or convert up to 10 steam into an esteem point each, which will move him on the esteem track. This player will also be the last person to place their airship token on the board. But of course, we'll have less options as the places will be heavily filled. Now that you understand how actions work, let's talk about your ship's generators. These are the bridge, the engine room, the laboratory, the time portal, the Midas machine generator, 
and the analytic engine. The number of crystals on each will determine how well these are running. The better they're running at, the better the bonuses you'll get when performing an action. That's right, every action we've described once taken and resolved will have your airship give you bonus rewards. So for the green mission action, you'll move your steam disc up one for each crystal in your bridge. For a blue encounter action, you'll gain one steam for each crystal in your engine room. For a black crystal deposit action, you'll also gain a time crystal for each crystal in your laboratory. For a gray money action, you'll gain an extra two for each crystal in your Midas machine generator. And your analytic engine crystal bonus is simply listed on the expedition card. The more you have, the more rewards you get. Lastly, when you take an upgrade action, you'll move your disc a number of spaces clockwise as the number of crystals there. Should you reach or pass the space, you'll immediately take an extra action. You'll take the time token and place it anywhere on the time flow board that does not contain another airship, returning it to its space after the action resolves. Yes, that means you can place it on a board that has available spaces, either on the same or lower boards where you have airships. When all players have placed their last airship, we go on to the supply phase. Here players will first take their airship back. The top time board will go to the bottom, pushing all others up. All crystals on the board are returned to the bag, and new ones drawn from the deposits. Remove all expedition, missions, and upgrades, and replace them with new ones. Upgrades and expeditions should be replaced with ones of the current round. Remove the effort card and flip over the next one. Then the first player takes their turn. Play the remaining rounds, 5 in total, to go to the end game scoring. Each player will check their mission card and spend the required resources to gain steam as listed here. Some could be done more than once. For crystals, using your steam for conversion still applies. Should a player cross the 60 or 120 mark, use these tokens to indicate such. The player with the most esteem after all is totaled wins. In a market where more and more hybrids between Euro and American games is becoming commonplace, it's nice to go back to the roots and classics. Steam time is a prime example of this. Not that it is a classic, or at least not yet, but it will certainly give you the same experience as such. The worker placement aspect, various tactics and strategy for winning, which are very well rounded in terms of balance, and the minimal luck factor make Steam Time the classic definition of a Euro. With that definition, of course, do come some cons. One being you really don't feel the theme coming through. Though it's great in terms of the time traveling aspects, and the fact that everything has been done to make the theme come alive, from the many witty acronyms in the game, name generators on your ships, and the fact that you can't go back on the stream of time, it is just an aspect that classic Euro games suffer from. But this is minimal and only gets a half point penalty. Another feature of a classic Euro which garners another half point penalty is artwork. Though it's a particular style, I would have preferred better artwork, more notably on the encounter and time boards. I mean, just look at the Easter Island board, you really need to look for the statues. Or the style for the pyramids, Great Wall of China, or, well, which one is this exactly? Though it's good to go back to basics, taking into account new developments in the board gaming industry where artwork has excelled in the last decade, should be taken into consideration. The replay value is there with extra modules from Sabotage and Specialists, which also give a boost to the subtle player interaction the game already offers. Lastly, again what most classics have that really cannot change is great mechanics or gameplay. Though Steam Time is very proficient in that aspect, it does suffer a little from lack of innovating mechanics. As stated, this is simply because a classic has a certain formula that makes it work. And Steam Time has taken that formula to deliver us a classic game. So on the innovation front, it garners another half point penalty. But with the cons being only half point each, Steam Time might just pass the test of time and become a classic. We'll definitely keep it in our collection and it scores an 8.5 out of 10. I regret everything I do immediately. <laughs>